Okay guys, gonna have a quick look at this mouse issue because um, I've borrowed another mouse off a, a person on the forum um, and I'll make this video a complete woe to go. And you can see the mouse there, just in the top left third. And left and right is not a problem at all now. So what I did do is take the mouse apart and give it a blow um, especially around the wheels, and that is smooth as anything, but there is zero up and down. Um, left click, does left click do anything? Yep, left click does stuff. So left click is working, as does right click. Right click brings up the menu, as you can see there. But there's no up and down, and if I pull the mouse apart and use the rollers, which I won't bore you with now, um, same thing, same thing. So I'm gonna pause it, I'm gonna turn the machine off, put, this mouse, so this I borrowed off uh, Matt from the Facebook groups, which I do appreciate Matt, just for the day, just because obviously this is his mouse, so this is a known good mouse, um, and I can tell the difference between the two easily because his has got these kind of feet, whereas mine had the circular feet. Um, so there's no mixing these two up, which I'm glad about as well. Um, and damn it, there goes my evil. Of course I wouldn't have done that. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm gonna swap these over and we'll see what happens with this mouse. Okay, don't almost don't want to touch this. So um, Matt's mouse is in. You can see my mouse upturned um, on the left hand side there. Matt's mouse is down in the corner there. There we go. Um, and let's see what we get. Just try and smooth out the strobing a bit for you there. Um, <clears throat> It's not the Amiga. It's not the Amiga. Let me just zoom in. Let me just zoom in. This is all I wanted to get out of this test. This is fantastic. It's not the Amiga. And there's the mouse and look, it's down the screen and it's all directions. And there we go. Fan bloody tastic. So it's not the Amiga. It is my mouse. It is my mouse. Okie dokie. Um, so after finding that a uh, known good mouse actually works with the Amiga, um, it's time to hopefully get lucky, I think, um, with the one that came with my Amiga. So this is mine, as I can deduce from the four pads at the bottom there. So I'm going to take the mouse ball out. I'm gonna put that over there. Okay, let's take this apart here. Okay. Okay, so it's the insides of the mouse. So it's the vertical one we've got problems with. And like I said, when I, I just blew in with my mouth um, on the left and right, and that really improved the um, responsiveness of that. There's a little bit of fluff on there, but not too much. And the wheel turns, I, mean, I, was, I was turning it with my fingers. So I'm really hoping we get lucky. So this is the first attempt really, is just giving this thing a good blowout. Let's give the whole thing a more. Oh, you didn't want to do that, Chris. These, I knew these were just held on with tape because I remember having problems with those on my original. Look, this mouse was tested. Doesn't say the result of the test. <laughs> Um, what I might quickly do is also just very quickly in here in case could just be a dirty pin Never know um, I don't know much about capacitors, but that doesn't appear to be bulging. There's two capacitors there actually Let's have a look at all angles of those I mean yeah, could it be those don't know I don't really want to get another mouse um, uh, because this one came with the pack. So I want to keep everything original. So it'd be nice if I don't even have to swap out the guts, if I can repair the guts. Um, let's just hope this is simple. 
Right, here we go. I'm fully loaded into Workbench. I wasn't tempted, I was very tempted to touch it while it was loading, but I like to make sure it's fully booted. Silly thing, it wouldn't make any difference, but um, let's see. Ah, uh, nope, nope. Not as easy as a blow job. I mean, um, blowing it with compressed air. Um, that's still only going left and right at the top of my screen, which you probably can't see there. Doesn't actually make any difference to anything. So, well, there we go. I'm wondering, does he look a bit dark? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, that's jumped down. My, oh, hang on. How, how and why? <sighs> oh, I've got some. Okay. Let's see if I can figure out what's going on here. Right, I had just then, see that? That just jumped down again. It's not completely dead, so what could it be? What on earth could be going on here? Well, that's that's interesting. Um, so I'm blowing that with compressed air, and that is making it move up and down. Hi right, guys, just some continued troubleshooting on this mouse issue. Um, I'm just going to point out a couple of things. I have been poking around with a multimeter, and all the resistors seem to be at least functioning, I haven't double checked because I hate maths and that they're given the correct resistance um, but they none of them are dead, none of them are um, infinite um, so that's one thing now the other thing earlier on in the video I said you can't see the light um, from these dyes, I was kind of looking in the wrong place so when I'm looking with the naked eye let me just zoom in here so these LEDs are the things sending light to the diodes and through a camera, somebody on the one of the Facebook groups I think pointed this out to me, you can actually see the light, that's what that little bit of light there is. Um, so with the naked eye you can't see that really, um, even in a darkened room, which is what I'm on now, but you can see that, that sort of pink glow there. So that is for the left and right which are working, and what I was told to do was compare because what I'm really looking for is one that isn't glowing. Well, here's up and down, and they are working. Both those are glowing pink, um, and they look consistent. So, well, the other side of this um, rather intricate little device, really, is obviously I've got a wheel here with little holes through it. That light shines through and is picked up by a diode on the other side. So that's the other part of that equation and um, whether one of those or both of those, but for them to both fail on the same input, um, it still seems weird that what happens, what's happening at the moment is if I spin this freely, as you saw when I was spraying it with air, if I really spin it, so if I pick this mouse up now and give that a good, then I do get some movement on the mouse on the screen. But I'm having to really, really spin it to get any movement. So it's, um, it's a bit weird. That's a mouse. Um, just some quick inf more information. Um, basically, the, all the consensus is um, on these mice when um, seeing the sort of uh, lack of response on, on a single axis is generally it's the photo transistors. There's a blog which I'll put in the link description. Um, uh, I'll put the link in the description, sorry. And just to show you, so the photo transistors, where's the thing I've just taken off? I haven't actually taken it off yet. They're underneath this piece of plastic and the blog, whilst being very good and it gives you the right part number, so I've ordered some, 
Um, and again, I'll put the link as to where to get them and the part number and everything. Um, but it's under this, and I, <laughs> this is quite a, see, I've, I've, I've liberated that now, but I just wanna show you, because it wasn't really detailed how you do that. And of course, if you're like me, and you find yourself having to do something like this, there's the phototransistors in there, you can see them. Um, basically, ba I don't know if you can see, there's two little, there's two little feet in there. Let's get a really good. Um, and so when it's down, it looks like that. So this is the one on the other side. So what I ended up having to do, I was trying to pry it from the side with a screwdriver, it doesn't work. Um, what I ended up doing was getting these pair of tweezers, putting it in those holes there, pushing on those tabs. I think looking at the, now that I can see it liberated, um, let's just have a look at the, the, um, the shape of that and get this information right, shall we? Where's the hook? The hook is there and the hook is there. So what you actually want to do is force those apart. So either a small screwdriver or the tweezers. I don't want to undo this side because this side's fine and so I don't want to upset it. Maybe pull them apart. What I actually did was I, I put these in there, pushed it in and pushed it up and that actually liberated it. Um, so don't go prying about from the side with a screwdriver like I first started doing. Um, because you're just going to munch your thing. Fortunately, I didn't do too much damage because I was being very careful. So you've got a photo transistor here and one here, and that's what's got to come out. That's what the light comes through, those two holes at the side there. Um, and of course, what we're looking at is the receiving side. So that's the sending side. It goes through the hole in the wheel, through that hole there, so that has to be lined up perfectly as well. So that's another thing that could happen is I guess if that shroud is slightly out of a line, that's gonna bug you up as well, thinking mechanically. Okay guys, same day as I just stripped this apart and uh, got this piece out to reveal the photo transistors be beneath. Um, I haven't pulled them out yet, uh, but exactly the same day. And this has arrived in the post um, and I will put the supplier in the link as well as the part number, because this literally was a, a same, sorry, next day delivery, next business day delivery, and it free postage. Um, and they sell these in lots of 10. So it was only $10 for 10, um, or just over about $11 uh, Australian. So about five pounds. Um, and like I say, they are a global distributor. So um, yeah, so this should be, Hopefully, look at that, carefully packaged up in an anti-static bag. <laughs> 10 of these, 10 little sea monkeys. No, photo transistors, Osram LPT-80A. That was easier than I thought. There's like a, a little Nipple, let's call it a nipple. That should face towards the sensor, towards the wheel, towards the sender, sorry, this is the sensor. So that's the way it should go in. Obviously you just work out, it's the topmost on this particular PCB. It's, it's these two here and these two here. There's the whole board in situ, but you just have to work out where well, that's the last component. So these two, it has to be because they're, they're nice and easy to the edge. So it's, it's not rocket science. And these two are the senders. Okay, so this one and this one. So you're actually saying exactly that. And this is where, this is the sort of thing you have to look out for. See, where I've melted the solder, that's actually, so you have to look out for that kind of thing. This, these ones are okay. But again, you know, you know what you're doing. So when I put the new one in, I'll, I'll sort of clean that up as well. So, do you know what? I'm using my fingers. I'm using my bloody fingers because, because fingers, and I can feel what's going on.
and they're through. It's not in far enough though. It's tricky trying to heat both sides up. Right, that's through and in place. So I'm just going to let that sit there. That actually went in easier than I thought, which is nice. I've just realised just the way the cable's going, you're probably going to be getting a lot of heavy breathing again in this one. I'm, I do apologise. I just love soldering so much. Oh, I love soldering. I love it. Oh, look at the solder goes all soft. Mm. Mm, look at it. Oh, I've created a bridge. Mm, a bridge. I've created a short circuit. I like circuits short. Oh, yes. I'm hoping I can just flow onto using the existing solder. How successful that's going to be, I don't know. And the thing is, these really have to be so damn straight. Like these clearly have to be in exactly the right position. And unfortunately what's happened now is I've pushed through the very lumps of solder. Oh, stop friggin' moving. I push through the very lumps of solder. I don't have the best patience in the world for something like this. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to put some more solder on them. I'll point out the error of my own ways um, because that's what you do. Um, I got into a bit of a fight with these two here um, and you can see that's very close. So I'm hoping there's no bridge there and I'm fairly confident that there isn't. And what I've done with, with this exact tool that I'm pointing with now, she gave it a bit of a scrape in between to try and make sure that there is no bridge there. Okay, and I can get, I can get through there. So I'm fairly certain, but as you can see, just as I slipped there, oh, I've done it again. I slipped and I've gone across this trace here which is of course the circuit for this pin. So I'm really hoping that I still have a full circuit there. They should be in a line with their appropriate sender, both that way and that way, which is quite hard to check. Okay, so back in the house now, and I'm not going to fully reassemble the mouse because at the end of the day, all I really need to put back on at this point is the wheel. In fact, I nearly forgot about that. <laughs> that would have been a really short trip. Um, so that needs to go in there. That's nice and easy. Is it that that should be in there? And then I bring that down with that. Okay, that's, that's in now. So what I did there, I don't know if you saw, and the wheel's spinning freely, so that's good, is I lifted up the wheel, put it inside the, the bit that sits in the bit that I was just putting in, and then levered it down. So I'm gonna turn this on, look out for puffs and stuff. Seems all good so far. Let's get workbench booting up. Okay, and I'm just gonna pick up the mouse. There's the mouse. And I'm going to try that horizontal up and down wheel. Hit the mouse pointer goes down, the mouse pointer goes up, the mouse pointer goes left, the mouse pointer goes right. I am one happy bunny. I am one very happy bunny right now. So what I'm going to do now is reassemble the mouse um, while it's there actually, that's fine. Um, and then I'll take a clip with the mouse properly working. We have a fully functional mouse. And now I'm very happy because I can now do workbench stuff. I can do deluxe paint. Um, I can do captive, which I've really been looking forward to get into. That's not the time, 
but what do you expect? That shit's not far off. Um, <laughs> Because I haven't got a battery backup clock, so that's fine. Um, so that's fantastic. So here we go. There's the um, the tank mouse fully back together, and that is working absolutely fine. Yeah, my mouse works. I live again. I am the man. Commodore on the five hundred. Oh yeah. 